Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. It's 10 a.m. Let's uh, let's get started. I'm respectful of your time. Um, so I'm Clemence Couchera, the Assistant Dean for the Graduate Law Programs at McGeorge. And with me today is my colleague, uh, Jocelyn Glynn, who is a director for the program. Hi, everyone. Uh, so today we're going to talk about how can an LLM degree advance your career. So we're going to first discuss about why pursuing an LLM degree, uh, how to choose the right LLM program, what to expect, and we will, of course, end with a little bit of McGeorge's uh, LLM programs. And we'll have plenty of time for questions at the end. So there are many reasons why one would want to pursue an LLM degree. I think, um, so I've, I've listed like a fair number of them that, uh, and I'll, I'll go through it, but uh, not all of those are, will apply to all of the candidates. Everyone who is pursuing an LLM degree has very has usually different backgrounds from others um, in the program, but most importantly, like they have different uh, career goals. Although, like in any LLM class that we have, we may have a few of them, like who, for example, like one of their uh, career goals is to be able to uh, take a bar exam in the United States. Most of the time, the only way you could do that is by doing an LLM program and taking specific courses in order to be eligible to take a bar exam. Um, others like aim to have an international law career, specifically in arbitration, for example. So they are looking to gain a global uh, expertise and uh, an LLM degree is certainly a way to gain uh, that, that expertise. Um, others who perhaps uh, have graduated from law school, but here in the United States, are looking uh, to get an expertise in a very particular uh, field of law. Uh, for example, someone who wants to uh, uh, expand their practice in water and environmental law or in tax law. Um, what is uh, unique about uh, US uh, LLM program, so I'm gonna talk about this uh, for, for a minute because a large majority of our students pursuing LLM program uh, are international students is so in American law schools, um, uh, alumni groups are very active. And uh, in my view, this is one of the reason why you would want to pursue an LLM degree. In addition to your career goals, whatever they may be, you also want to be able to engage with other alumni because it's a wonderful networking um, uh, opportunity. Uh, you may also be able to access uh, career advising centers at that law school at that university. That's certainly our case for, for us at McGeorge where all of our students have access to uh, uh, our what we call our CDO, our career development office. Some students also uh, decide to do an LM program because they know it's a stepping stone before they can apply for a PhD program or in the legal field, it's often called a JSD program. Uh, without an LLM degree, you often uh, are barred from uh, uh, being admitted into those programs. So um, as, you, as you can see, there are plenty of reasons to do an LLM program. Now, whether you want to do an LLM program in the United States or is your home country is obviously like yet another, uh, another question. Um, it, going back to if you are interested in having an international law practice, uh, obviously gaining legal English skills and gaining a U.S. legal education like uh, can be crucial uh, to your to your future career. Um, similarly, if you do hope to stay in the United States, like it's very hard for international lawyers to move to the United States and to start a practice or to be or to practice law in the United States without having a US legal education. So I'm gonna turn this over to my colleague, Jocelyn Blinn, just for her, her to add uh, her few remarks. I, um, I completely agree. I think um, people study um, an LLM for a lot of different reasons, but one thing that we often hear from um, our students here at McGeorge is that one of the things they really appreciate is the, the 
going back to um, uh, Dean Kuchera's point about the um, the networking is the the life the lifelong friendships that they build up um, while they're while they're um, here on campus, and then related to um, U.S. legal education, I think one of the other um, things you can gain from an LLM is uh, just a perspective on different ways that um, law is approached and taught. Um, so um, I also hear a lot from students that they really appreciate um, taking skills-based courses, which are really focused on um, at, U at some US law schools. So, um, you know, the opportunity to be um, exposed to the Socratic method and then the opportunity to take classes in mediation on, or alternative dispute resolution. So um, I think just that, that broader perspective on different ways that law can be taught and approached. Thank you. Oops, sorry. So obviously, then this like uh, nicely uh, transitions. You had to choose the right LLM program. Um, we've talked about this in the previous slide, but I think this is crucial. It's really take time to identify your career goals. Like um, we see many prospective students who have not completely figure out like what they want to do eventually in the future, and um, I think this effect. Uh, their, uh, their the, the choice that's in the LLM program, but also once you have chosen the LLM program and you've been admitted to an LLM program, like uh, this will also affect like the courses that you will take. So I think this is a first step is like, you need to identify your career goals. It doesn't have to be one goal. It can be few goals, um, but lay them that, like write them down, like just to, you have a clear idea of where you wanna go. And then you need to figure out like, what are the important criteria that you're looking for? Is location important? Is uh, look, uh, scholarship another important factor? Um, is on-campus employment important? Is, um, is a particular faculty expertise or we have expertise important? Like you do wanna think, keep this in mind. And obviously as you are determining uh, the list of the important criteria, um, they need to nicely match your career goals. Um, as I mentioned in, uh, in the previous slides, many of our students do want to take uh, a bar exam in the United States. They don't always end up taking a bar exam right after the LLM program, but they know that with the LLM program, they're opening this door and this door can still open for a few years. So you don't have to necessarily take the bar exam right after uh, 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 law school. But this, like knowing that this is one of their goals like influences the course that they wanna take, but it also before that, it also influences like which program they wanna select. So at many law schools and certainly including at McGeorge, like you can take the courses that would qualify you to uh, take the New York or California bar exam. If you say, so this is like, those are the two bar exams that many of the international students wanna take. So it's pretty common, like we know the rules, we know the process and we work with our students to make it happen. If we know that even before the program starts, we work with a, our admitted students. Uh, we work with them to start the, the paperwork because it can be sometimes a little lengthy. But let's say you say, oh, no, I actually wanna live in Maryland. Like I know someone there, or I don't know, I've always thought about living there. You know, then we would spend time looking at what are the rules over there? and um, what courses do you need to take and is our program a good fit? So that's why like, you know, really starting with your career goals like helps you then determine either criteria location, uh, the, the criteria, the important criteria for you. And lastly, you need to identify your timeline. What are you, what are you looking at? Are you looking at starting an LM program as soon as possible? Um, some law schools such as McGeorge has um, offer two starts we, uh, our students, LM students can start either in August or in January. There are some law schools where you can only start in, in August. Uh, there are other schools who also have a summer start. Um, so you need to figure out like, how much time do you wanna spend doing the LM program? As you may know, uh, you uh, have some flexibility, although for those of you who are, uh, who will be here under, uh, with a US uh, student visa, you will have a little less flexibility because you need to maintain a full course of study. 
but you could do the program likely over two, three, or perhaps even four semesters. So you need to figure out your timeline um, in order to help you determine which uh, program is the right program. Now, there are also many schools, including ours, uh, that offer more than one LLM program. So we have an LLM in US LLM policy, which is our most, our general LLM program. We also have an LLM in water and environmental law and an LLM in transnational business practice. So at our university, you can switch from one LLM program to another. So we don't often have people switching from the water and environmental law LLM program, but we have students switching between the US law and policy and the transnational litigation, uh, the transnational business practice uh, program. So you need to figure out like, what are the uh, LLM programs uh, at the school, at the university that you're choosing? Because sometimes something else will happen and you need to adapt, you know, you, you need to change for whatever reason. So we have an LLM program, as I mentioned, the US LLM policy, that is the most flexible LLM program so that if something were to happen, if for example, let's say the New York Bar say, you are not eligible to take the bar exam because you're missing this course and this course and this course, with the LLM in transnational business practice, you would have, you have a little less flexibility. So students may decide to switch to the other LLM program. So keep this in mind as you're choosing your uh, LLM program. Um, Director Blinn, do you have any, any additional comments? Um, I, I would just add that I, I completely agree that having a good sense of what's important to you is very important at the time that you're, you're applying because um, there are a lot of law schools in the US and the US is a big country. So um, the law schools, in addition to different, different locations also have different sizes. And then the sizes of the LLM programs vary a lot. So, so, so some law schools have um, a huge number of LLM students, others have smaller, others are kind of in between. And so just kind of having a sense of what kind of environment you want to study in. Are you interested in studying with um, US law students in addition to international students? Because at some law schools, you'll be taking most of your classes with um, US JD students. At other law schools, um, some classes will weave with the JD students and other students with other classes with international students. And then um, some LLM programs, um, the LLM st students study primarily um, as a group. So I think just kind of knowing what you want to get out of your experience, um, in addition to the specifics of the academic program is, is really important. Thank you. So then once you've made all of those decisions, you've decided to do an LM program, you've chosen like the, pro, the, the right LM program, you admitted to the program, what can you expect into, in an LM program? So this list of expectation, I tried to make them as general as possible, you know, to apply to uh, different LM programs. Um, but uh, I can tell you that when I worked on this list, I was remembering my own experience. So uh, I'm a uh, French American now, but uh, when I came to the US, I was just French. Uh, I came to do an LLM program. Uh, so I went through a similar process as to what you're going through right now is determining should, should I do an LLM program? What is the right law school? And then like, what is it gonna be once I'm there? So um, although I've done that 15 years ago, I think, um, some of those, uh, what to expect is still like, it's still, it's still very much the same. So the first thing, and, and Dr. Blin, please like, you know, chime in uh, anytime, is uh, it's gonna be challenging. It is challenging. Uh, many of you may come from universities where you were one in a thousand class where participation was not expected, where preparation for class was not expected. Um, where there were simply just one final and you pass it or you don't pass it and that's just it. This is certainly not the case in uh, US uh, law schools across the board. Um, uh, you will have reading to do for each of your class session. You will have to uh, so prepare, understand the materials, uh, be ready to discuss it in class. And then after class, you'll need to outline it. So it's, uh, it is challenging at first, especially if English is your second language. I actually, I would say, I'm gonna just slightly amend my remark. It's challenging at first for every international student, even if English, uh, even if you studied in a school where English was a primary language, just because American legal English is different. 
and the expectation in American law school is different and is high. There is, we have a high expectation of our students. Um, after the challenge, it just like, to me, it was just like a wonderful experience. So uh, even though it was challenging at first, uh, the learning growth like, was unbelievable. So, um, so at some point you overcome that challenge and you start to enjoying uh, uh, the wave. Uh, you also, frankly, have an amazing networking opportunities. Like not, um, it, it's again, like I mentioned in my, in my first slide, like this is like, I feel like a very, uh, more American law school experience where American law schools, like in McGeorge, we host networking events for our students year round. Our career development office is very active. They host networking events on particular area of law, like year round. We also have, we also have I think 45 or 50 student group, uh, student organizations on our campus for our law students. Uh, and those groups like invite guest speakers, alumni. Um, so there is like a wonderful, really wonderful networking opportunity. And as you all know by now, this is how you're gonna land your first, maybe it's not your first job, but this is often how you land your second job. Or if you already have your product practice, this is how you expand your practice. Uh, this is how you meet like perhaps like a new associates. So um, really wonderful networking opportunity that do not stop with graduation. Like it keeps on going with the alumni groups. You obviously will develop in-depth uh, expertise in a specific area of law that you choose, uh, whether it's transnational business practice or in general US land policy. In many school, um, not all, but that's the case again for McGeorge, like you're able to, if you want to develop, to narrow your studies in a particular area of law. So for example, like let's say more international business or you wanna be do more like uh, IP law or you wanna do more like the um, basic like American law, like whatever you decide to do, like you're gonna be able to develop that in-depth expertise. Um, so I won't, I had to put, it's expensive. It is an expensive, uh, it's an expensive program. It's an investment of uh, your time and your money. There's no question about it. Um, I think the return on investment is, is definitely there. Um, we have wonderful success stories. And I would even, I include myself as one of the success stories. Like it's, it is a life-changing experience. Uh, but it can be a little scary because it is expensive, but it is gonna boost your CV. There is no question about it. Um, it's gonna boost your CV, it's gonna show much more than just you having an LLM program. Uh, to be, a, sorry, it's gonna show much more than you just being an LLM graduate. It's also gonna show your abilities to adapt, your abilities to change, your abilities to understand another culture, your abilities to absorb a different legal culture. Uh, it, it just shows much more than just, uh, th than just a degree. And this is when, again, we, I go back to our career uh, advising center that work with our students for them to create their stories, to, for them to create their narrative. Jocelyn? Um, no, I, I'll just, I'll just add in that I, 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 it's, it's, it's challenging and rewarding for um, American trained uh, or um, American JD students as well. So um, also, I think, um, expect to get involved and expect to get involved from from day one and to um, just really dive into the the whole experience of being in law school in the US because you can get so much out of joining the student organizations or going to a lecture on um, just whatever topic you're interested in, like a, you know, an aspect of intellectual property law, whatever just um, sparks your interest. And I think if you um, keep an open mind and are flexible and are just um, willing to just embrace the experience that you'll, you'll get um, an incredible amount out of it. Thank you. So, um... Now, let me turn this a little bit about McGeorge's LLM program, although we've uh, spoken about them like throughout the presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, we have three LLM programs. We also have a doctoral uh, program. So it's a post LLM, a degree in international legal studies. Again, like, you know, 
If you identify that one of your career goal is to earn a doctorate uh, a degree in law, you should mention that when, as you're applying for the LM program. Because for example, at our university, we're able to set up, uh, to craft your curriculum so that some of your LLM units can count towards your JD uh, uh, degree. So um, anyway, just uh, just wanted to throw that in again that identifying your goal, your purpose, like is is quite important. Um, we have had at McGeorge like an LLM program like for years and years. Like we are really well recognized in our field. Uh, we provide uh, individualized uh, personal experience to our students. Um, we have uh, a personalized approach. That's um, that's who we are, like you're talking to us right now. We have two other people in our team. Uh, throughout the application process, you will hear from us directly. We're the one who, to work with you, primarily Jocelyn, Director Blin is the one to work with our um, applicants. Uh, when admitted, uh, we directly contact you. You work again with us for your visa, for your student visa, and not many universities have a, um, a centralized location for student visa. And it can get, frankly, the visa sometimes a paperwork can get held up uh, at that because like everybody's applying at the same time. We only deal with our students. So it's, it's I, in my view, like you may not realize this like now, but like maybe in six months, you will understand that it makes it's gonna make your application and your visa process much easier. And frankly, we are pretty fast. We have a pretty fast turnaround. Um, we also do sit down with individually with each of our students uh, to talk about, again, career goals, purpose, and then we decide on, uh, we make recommendation on courses that could be a good fit. Our students always have uh, the final say. So uh, I mentioned the network, which for me, I think is extremely important. Uh, we have uh, uh, McGeorge uh, alumni, uh, uh, worldwide. We host international alumni reunion like every other year. So we keep up with that uh, networking opportunity. So we're hoping that uh, next spring we will be, we'll have a reunion in Prague. Um, so we talked about the cost. Um, this is like uh, the tuition from uh, the LLM program and the um, living expenses a fee for this academic year. We're still waiting for our board of regents to announce like the tuition for next year likely be will be very similar. We understand that it is expensive to do an LM program. So as you're looking at LM programs, you will see that our program is uh, frankly reasonably priced. Um, we also have scholarships. Uh, we have um, endowed scholarship and we also have uh, a, a Dean's Merit Scholarship as well as a need-based scholarship. Uh, all of our students are eligible for a scholarship, like uh, at time of application, we review for um, scholarship as well. There is no additional paperwork to do. Obviously, for those of you who are here in the US, uh, you uh, may uh, be eligible for uh, federal loans um, and our financial aid office, like, you know, manage that process. Um, once you determine like which LLM program to apply, if you decide to apply to McGeorge, all of that information is on the website. It's very standard. Uh, we do take uh, application via LSAC or via GRADCAS, uh, whatever is uh, easier for you, is just for you. Uh, on GRADCAS, like there is no application fee. On LSAC, our application is also, um, our application fee is also waived, but LSAC may charge you uh, an additional fee for their services. Um, we do require transcripts from all universities and colleges attended. Unofficial copies are certainly accepted at time for the uh, admission process. Uh, if you were to matriculate at McGeorge, you, we will need uh, the official copies um, at that point. We understand that there are many countries where you will only get one official copies of your transcripts. So we don't want you to give that to us because we'll never be able to give it back to you we will at that point just simply ask you to bring them to the office and we will make uh, our own notarized copy. We obviously need a resume or uh, uh, CV. Both are the same, uh, depending on where you're from, you may be more familiar with one or the other. A personal statement for us to understand why you want to do this LM program and why our school. We really want this to be a win-win like relationship. 
Um, and then we want one letter of recommendation. Um, so it could be from a professor, it could be from uh, uh, your supervising attorney, just to talk about your, um, your ability, in their view, your ability to uh, pursue a, an advanced law degree. And finally, for those of you whose um, uh, English uh, is not your native language, we also need a proof of English proficiency. So Dr. Blin, please interrupt me if you have anything else to add. I don't really have much much to add, except that I think sometimes the admissions process, the process of apply, applying to law schools can, can be a bit daunting, um, intimidating. And I, I think what I would say is just start, just start the process because, because as long as you just take it step by step, it's, it's really not um, as difficult as you might, might imagine. And I know um, for, for us at McGeorge, it, especially if you apply using our GradCast application, once you start an application, we're, we, we then have you on our radar. And if we start to see um, you working on an application and you're missing certain documents, we'll reach out to you. So then we can kind of get a, get a dialogue going um, between us so that we are, have a relationship even um, before an admission decision is made. So, so that, that, that's just what I would add. Thank you. So you see our uh, application deadlines, like we have a priority deadline for uh, spring 22. So spring 22, um, that means like you're starting in January, uh, January of uh, 2022. So our priority deadline is October 30. Um, for next fall, it's uh, uh, end of March. We still accept application after those uh, priority deadlines. It's just like uh, when you apply by those priority deadlines, you're guaranteed that, that you will get an admission and a scholarship offer or uh, within two weeks. So we very much encourage you to, uh, to apply prior to the deadline. Um, we, for those of you also who need a US visa, do keep in mind that uh, this may take time. So we we'll try to uh, put that in so that you have plenty of time to uh, do all the paperwork. Again, like it can be very uh, daunting to uh, go through the visa paperwork and the application process. Uh, I think Director Blin makes it so easy and so smooth. Our students never have any problem uh, filling out the information or understanding the process. Uh, what takes time often is on the US consulate side. They sometimes, um, especially as they're starting to open again, sometimes like it's hard to schedule an appointment. And at times like they may ask you to come, for, to come back for a second appointment because they need uh, additional documents. So keep this in mind. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just jump in because I don't think we've mentioned this before, but I think one of the things that we learned during um, COVID and and working um, remotely is that Zoom is a wonderful tool. And I just want to throw out that we are very very happy to meet with you over Zoom if you have questions about the visa process. Um, you know, I've done that a lot with students um, over uh, over this last year and a half, and it seems to seems to help the process move along um, along well. So so for questions about both. Um, the visa process and the application process, all you need to do is reach out to us um, with an email and we will um, schedule a time. Um, and we're, we're very aware of the different time zones. So we'll, we'll schedule a time that's convenient for, for that works for you. Um, and uh, sometimes it's just nice to have that face-to-face -face interaction. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, so we don't have, I think this uh, marks the end of our presentation. This is just like a little quote from one of our 2009 uh, LLM grad who, uh, who now works. So she's originally from China and now she works in Vienna, Austria. She did the LLM in transnational business practice and her, her career is uh, quite su successful. So just wanted to, to share it with you. Yeah, I'll just jump in because I heard uh, uh, an interesting story from one of our recently admitted students who uh, told me yesterday on a Zoom call that he had actually um, met Miss um, Lee and talked about how wonderful she was. And then he sent her, a, and uh, this is kind of going back to the networking opportunity of doing an LLM, that um, he then sent her an email say, saying, oh, I'm going to be doing the same LLM that you did, You're going to your same school. And she sent him a nice, nice email back. So it was just kind of nice to hear firsthand and recently of a, a connection like that. 
Thank you so much for sharing this. This is wonderful. So I think at this time, uh, we are available to take questions. Uh, okay, so the best way to ask questions is by submitting them, typing them in the Q&A box that uh, you have in Zoom. So we're gonna give you a couple of minutes, ask all your questions. So I think it's best to ask your question. Oh, okay, so. Um, so I think it's best to, yeah, to ask your question like in the Q&A box, but talking about like, so someone submitted and I think Jocelyn reposted uh, for, uh, for the benefit of everyone, uh, the question that was sent to her, what were your career goals when you decided to pursue an LLM? Do goals often change? So, uh, uh, my career goal was to do international development work. Uh, that has always been my passion. Even though I'm French, I grew up like uh, in Egypt uh, overseas. And so I uh, always had a, uh, yeah, that was, that was my passion. So I, uh, through networking in McGeorge, like upon graduation, I actually was hired to write grants and with our global center for business and development, like we, submitted a grant to USAID, which is the United States Agency for International Development to do work in China, rule of law work in China. And we were awarded that work. So um, I uh, did rule of law for six, seven years. We also, during that time, applied to other grants. I uh, enjoyed it very much. It did require me to travel all the time. And uh, my husband and I then decided to start a family. So. I needed to find uh, something a little bit more stable. Uh, so as far as like uh, location, so I ended up uh, taking this position to oversee the LLM program, uh, which I very much enjoy. So, uh, so yeah, so do my goals change? Yes. Will one day, will I go back to rule of law? Like uh, it depends on <laughs> when my kids get out of the house, <laughs> uh, what my husband and I wanna do, but perhaps I may also wanna do something completely different. Uh, I do find myself like a passion for helping uh, people in need. So um, maybe I'll do something more, more local. Thank you for the question. And thank you, Justin, for reposting it. Uh, so do most students stay in the US after graduation? Uh, what about OPT? So, um, 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 uh, sorry, I'm just blanking. Uh, so OPT, so the optional practical training allows students to, uh, to stay for one year after graduation. And, uh, you know, I think Justin, I actually need your help with this. I don't know if most of our students, a lot of our students talk about it, but I'm not sure uh, if most of our students end up staying. Yeah, I was just thinking about that too. Um, I, I think students come with different backgrounds and goals. So we have, we have some students that um, they really are only, they can only take a short time out of their career path in their home country. So some students return to their home country um, quickly after graduation, you know, because sometimes they have a job um, lined up there. Um, and then other students, um, there is something called optional practical training um, that allows you to get practical experience in the US for a year after graduation. And st some students are very um, eager to take advantage of the, the extra time that they can, can stay and um, you know, learn what it's like to really uh, work in um, the legal field uh, here. So I would say, I don't know. I think if I were to estimate maybe, maybe a third of this, our international students will um, opt to um, apply for OPT, which, which 
you're eligible if you if you if you if you get an F1 student visa to come here to study. Um, it's really just a matter of uh, um, it's almost more of a formality of submitting um, an application that we will work with you on um, to stay. So um, yeah, I think it just I think it just depends on the um, particular student and what what their goals are and what, often it's where someone is in their career. You know, if, if someone does, hasn't. Um, obtained experience before in their home country, if they came to us right after graduating from their first law degree, they're much more likely to stay in the U.S. for that for that extra year to get, because the, at that point, they're really getting their first practical um, experience. Um, and then other, some students have, the students who are more experienced and have worked for, for a number of years in their home country, it just depends on the flexibility of their employers. Thank you. Okay, so we got another question about the New York bar or the LA bar. So, uh, so it's actually the New York uh, state bar or the California bar. Um, LA or San Francisco cities don't have bar exam. It's really, it's uh, the, um, the state. So the, for the New York state bar and the California state bar. Um, so I'm not sure exactly what the question is about. What are the options available for us? So I, I, I'm gonna, and perhaps uh, the students could uh, clarify, but um, I'm gonna say, what are the options like, or how can we be eligible to take the, those bar exams? So uh, both of those states have very specific process on uh, how to request eligibility uh, for foreign attorneys or foreign law students. It is uh, for the New York bar actually quite lengthy. For California, it's a little less lengthy, but it still like requires like very specific state uh, steps. So the availability is uh, for you to take the courses that are required by those two uh, state bar exam in order to be eligible to take the bar exam. Um, what you should expect, both bar exams are now like two days uh, uh, bar exam. One day is a, a national test that applies to, I think every state in the United States now has adopted that national standardized uh, bar exam. And then another day, the second day is now uh, just on, um, uh, that is uh, more state specific. We have uh, specific courses. In addition to taking the courses to be eligible, right? To take the bar exam. We also offer all the, subject that tested on the bar exams, we offer all of those as courses. So if you just wanted to take bar tested courses during your LLM program, you can do that. We also have some classes to help you prep for the bar exam. Um, so they are not subject specific, but more strategy or how to write those essay exam, um, how to approach them. In addition, I will tell you that every law student JD students or American and LLM students also purchase a commercial bar preparation. So you do need to be ready to invest another $3,000 or so to a commercial bar preparation that for, I think it's eight weeks, just cram all the knowledge that you need to know on all the subject to uh, pass the bar exam. In addition, some of them also gives you like a, a sample bar exam test and so practice exams. So um, I hope this answered your question about what are the options available and what should you expect? If not, please go ahead and, and, and type in the chat uh, your cl a clarifying question. It's also very um, helpful if you, um, when you start a program and you're starting to talk with us about course selection, to let us know right from the very start which bar exam you plan to take. And some people actually plan to take both the California and the New York bar exam, because then we can approach academic counseling with you in a much more informed way and make sure that we have you in the right program, um, because the US law and policy program is the one that's most flexible for, for um, bar, um, bar takers. Uh, but it just ensures that, we, that we're watching and, and have you enrolled in the correct courses. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. I see that you have answered your question. Uh, any other questions? If not, um, thank you very much for your time.
I will follow up with uh, everyone with an individual email. So you'll have my contact information. And uh, I look forward to uh, hearing from you soon. Have a fantastic day.